you know, has been on a bit of a run. Uh, obviously, we had the whole Lana ending where she, you know, said, the, "Yeah, give him the spear and <laughs> that look. Uh, but w- what did you make of this? I mean, obviously, just under sort of, uh, or just over seven minutes in this match. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think you summed it up pretty well. I think, obviously, it was kind of serving two purposes, really. Mm-hmm. I think they obviously wanted to kind of move forward with the whole Bobby Lashley Lana thing, which is why mm-hmm. they did the ending that they did. And at the same time, they want they you know, they've obviously got a big, big plan for for, for Alistair Black. I was gonna call him Tommy there just because <laughs> so you can't him. do as bad as um, me. Yeah. Um it, obviously they've got a a very long term plan for him and obviously they need to keep him on screen and they want to keep him going and keep his momentum going um as well. So I, I kind of felt this match was kind of put together for that reason. Yeah. Um but you know, you know, good solid match, you know, um got the black mass ending which everyone loves. I mean mm-hmm. I think it's that, that's yeah. everyone's favourite finish mm-hmm. at the moment, isn't it? The black mass mm-hmm. it's such a it's such a wicked thing obviously yeah, I mean, the storyline as well. So damn the way he ran into that uh, that was that was really well done I watched the replay yeah. that a few times I had to keep rewinding it and uh, it's, yeah. it's a hard thing like I don't know what it's like because obviously I'm not a wrestler but like to run into that like to make that look like it could look pretty awful as well if yeah. you didn't get the timing right I'm guessing it's but one it's of great, those, but, those ones but it did, it did lead me just to one thing as well it was like um, mm-hmm. WWE does have a bit of a spear problem at the moment, yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I came. This came up in conversation yesterday with someone else, and I just said, "It's just, it's just they've got." The, and I think it's the problem when you've got a roster so large mm-hmm. is that there's about four, four, five people using a spear at the moment. Right, it? So, yeah. so Lashley uses a spear, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, Charlotte used a spear, and she mm-hmm. used it in the match preceding this. And then you've got Goldberg, Reigns, and mm-hmm. Edge as well. Yeah, <laughs> it was a slight spear issue Who's here next? at the moment. Yeah. So, yeah. So there we go. But yeah, no, it's great. I mean, obviously, like I said, you know, Alistair, Alistair Black is, is, there's obviously a very, they're really investing in him. So mm-hmm. I, I don't, it wasn't a shock for me that he, that, that he uh, came out the winner on this one. Yeah. No, uh, as we go on, we have, uh, we've got like a, a bit here with Bailey. She's ranting about her match tonight and um, has a little bit of a segment. Then we get Gronk uh, showing up, Rob Konkarski. Now I've got to say, if there's anyone that really has annoyed me on this WrestleMania, it's him. I don't know what it is. I just can't, I just cannot get into this guy. I know what they're trying to do. He's he's got the energy. They're trying to. I I just wish it would have been New Day this year in a lot of ways. Yeah. This thing because um, I think I could relate to them a little bit more. But because I'm not like I'm not a big NFL fan, so I don't know a lot about this guy. I'm guessing to a certain patch of the audience. Was he, was he in like the Battle Royal? Was he in he the was. Battle Royal a few yeah, years yeah. ago or last that year? Was, or year before? Was it last yeah, year? Yeah, it was year before? about two years ago, and the security guard didn't know who he was, did she? That's right. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, right. he was and there, were, and you might recognise him from something. But uh, yeah, that, uh, yeah, I think I think if you're American, you probably know all about him and you know mm-hmm. who he is. And uh, but I think to British audiences, in particular, we were just left a bit sort of like. <laughs> and I think I think for us, I think uh, I, just, I think the energy, his energy is just on the annoying side rather than the sort of exciting <laughs> side so um, yeah yeah it was uh yeah yeah so anyway he just talks about uh, the 24 7 title which again is another really redundant thing for me uh to, to be going on about but they they love to have that in there and uh we get the next match now obviously this this sort of was like one of those ones that did get played out a little bit from the um, some some uh segments and angles they'd done towards this but we had Otis going against Dolph Ziggler. Believe it or not, Dolph Ziggler's first single match at WrestleMania uh, took place here um, for however long he's been in the company. Really? Yeah, yeah. I learned that earlier on today. I couldn't believe it. But uh, yeah, this was his first one. And, uh, and of course he lost. <laughs> that's insane. I'm, yeah. really, I'm really stunned. I'm, yeah. really, I'm genuinely yeah, yeah, stunned I was by as that. Well. But, I was as well when I heard I that. I suppose he's done like Money in the Bank matches in the past. and Yeah, tag matches. Tag match. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. I'm really stunned yeah. by that. But, um, um, I mean, yeah. I mean, to be fair... I mean, you know, I enjoyed the match. I thought, you know, I thought he was, you know, good, good. You know, Zig- I don't think Ziggler ever disappoints when he's in the mm-hmm. ring. Um, and I think maybe just a bit predictable. We knew what was going to happen just because it's it's a similar story that's played out before mm-hmm. this kind of, you know, the 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 sort of underdog romance, if you will. Yep. Um, so I think, you know, I kind of knew it. But it was a good, you know, it was a good feel-good moment, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. It was kind of like, you know, it's one of those ones where 
everyone likes, you know, in their favorite TV show when two characters eventually get together that you've been rooting for. So I think to kind of, you know, see that is what we were going with, um, which is good. Although I did have to do like a double take. When Mandy Rose came out, I genuinely thought she was naked. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, like, I had a massive double take. WrestleMania just got extreme. I know. I was like, oh my God, she walked yeah. out stark naked just in yeah. her boots. And then I realized, I saw what she was wearing. I was like, oh no, okay, she's got a gold outfit on. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I didn't um, have a problem with this. To be honest with you, it was it was it was quick enough, and they hit all the right parts to the match. Yeah, and, uh, didn't outstay its welcome. So yeah, it was you know it was good. You know it was good in that sense, and you know you got the kiss at the end, didn't you? And that's exactly. Kind of, you know, so uh, yeah. A typical, a kind of like old school WrestleMania feel good moment yes. at the end of a match is what we got there. So That's it. Got from between WrestleMania eight and sort of twelve sort of time. Yeah. Especially. Um, then we get the last man standing match: Edge versus Randy Orton. Now, I would say of all the feuds going into this, this has probably been the one I've enjoyed the most, just because they've hit some real kind of themes and they've kind of crossed the boundaries a little bit to reality and mm. on screen. It's been pretty good because I like it when they do that um, and uh, they put in a lot of stuff. But I've got to say, when I, I mean, I had a lot of expectations, I, I guess, but then after yesterday, I was kind of thinking like, after seeing Kevin Owens and uh, Seth like the night before, I was like, blimey, they've, they've kind of taken away a bit of what they could have done in this match mm. a little bit. So I was a bit worried. But obviously, they went the more backstage route completely. Yeah. Um, my only thing to this, I mean, I do think they both put a hell of a lot of effort in, but it was just a bit too long. I mean, yeah, I, I, think... I was watching this thinking, blimey, this is, <laughs> this is well over. Um, it was a proper it, stand, you know. It was a long, long match. I think yeah. it was about 36 minutes, I think someone mm-hmm. said. Uh, and again, I thought it was, you know, it was, it was a great story. It was, you know, you've got a great history between the two of them. Mm-hmm. In terms of you know what they've done in the past and and going into this was was I was really excited for it and I think this is again though I think this this suffered from the this was Edge's big return you mm-hmm. know match and there wasn't a, a Clive crowd and you just think what difference you know his entrance would have been like if, sure. if the low ground but you know now that we're kind of getting past that um, but no I you know enjoyed it it was a good it was it was a fun street fight type match um, uh, I know there was a bit of controversy about one particular spot um, with the where Edge was kind of hanging off the gym equipment. Um, that yeah. fallen under. I didn't actually see that though at the time. Like that no. didn't even enter my brain. Mm-hmm. So I was quite, you know, I've, I've seen the fuss that's come from it, um, but I didn't. That I didn't even make a connection between the the, the fuss over that film there. But yeah, I think I think it was it was very long, and I, it, I you know, personally for me. Um, I kind of like street fights to be a bit shorter because mm-hmm. with a traditional wrestling match, you've got certain rules in place which could allow it to go quite long. I think when you're in a street fight and you're hitting each other with all sorts of stuff, yeah, yeah, you know, you think, you know, how much can the human body take? So, mm-hmm. um, but it was, you know, it was great. And I, I like this sort of, uh, I, I like the, um, I did like the follow up joke Edge made, Edge made on Twitter about him jumping off lad when he said he told Beth Phoenix he wasn't going to go off any more ladders <laughs> or whatever it is, so scaling a ladder and jumping off. So, yeah, but, yeah. but again, I think there was a slight, and I think this, when we talk about the championship match later, mm-hmm. there was a lot, I felt there was a lot of similarities to what we'd seen in, with, with Owens and Rollins, which I really enjoyed. I really yeah, enjoyed Owens yeah. and Rollins from night one. Yeah. Um, and we saw a similar thing, but you know, it was a nice, it was a nice tour of the performance center anyway. Yeah, we got to see, we got a tour, uh, uh, an unofficial tour around the uh, the performance center. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I think the only other thing I would say that really that hindered this a bit was the play by play during the match. It was a bit awful for me. I don't know what they were doing, but it needed like for me, it needed a bit of Jim Ross and Lawler. This this would have been one of the t- in their prime. But you know, I would have I think they would have been pretty decent at. Presenting oh, yeah. and telling just the story, screaming, just screaming their heads off. Um, but I, I don't know if it was just so long that even the play-by-play guys were like, oh, "I don't know what else to talk about." Yeah, that's it. <laughs> because... I mean, I think I think with those kind of matches, you do need you do need the commentary to to to, to really go for it. Um, yeah, you know, as an <laughs> as an anecdote, I remember um, when I was doing commentary for Progress, um, mm-hmm. and I screamed my lungs out during the Osprey Havoc match. Right. Um, where Osprey won the title. This was the yeah. progress yeah. So where Osprey finally won the title off, mm-hmm. off Hammer, Havoc, and we, you know, we absolutely bellowed our lungs out. And then, um, and then, unfortunately, I got a call from Progress the next day and said that the um, the uh, audio track for the commentary had corrupted, oh. um, and so. 
<laughs> and so we actually had to re-record. So what actually oh, ends no. up, what, what, what is on progress on demand is not yeah. on live record, even though we were live recording around that time. Mm-hmm. Um, it was actually a, a, a re-record. We had to yes. re-record the entire show mm-hmm. from uh, Glenn's flat the next day. Mm-hmm. So it was really hard. <laughs> it was really hard trying to sum yeah, up that, that same energy again, yeah. that, you know, that we'd done two nights before. So mm-hmm. it was, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, and, you know, I saw, I see the criticisms. And, you know, it's tough. You know, I, I think, again, I think commentary did an amazing job considering the circumstances mm-hmm. in general for WrestleMania. Um Especially, I think was it. I can't remember if it was just for the pre-show or whether something. You know, Michael Cole was doing it on his own. I think, and that's really hard. Yeah, yeah. commentary on your own is really hard. So, props to them. But I do, I kind of have understood people's criticism of the commentary during this match. So, yeah, I, I think it's harder because because you haven't got the crowd reaction. You're kind of having to feel dead air a lot of the mm. time. So there's always those moments where it's too quiet, and then you might just be saying things that don't need to be said. Or so it is. It is very challenging. I think in that area. Um, to do that um, then we get this of course the 24-7 stuff going on <laughs> the geeks of it in here having a fight over it and obviously Gronk uh, dives off the perch and wins the title of this one um, and next up we have the Raw Tag Team Championship match the Street Profits up against uh, Angel Garza and Austin Fury um, yeah I mean I- I'm guessing on a normal Wrestlemania show where it's like nine ten hours this is one of those matches they put in there to maybe bring the pace up a little bit or whatever after a, a huge match like the last man standing but in this circumstance I'm just I'm a little bit I, I didn't really get I didn't like the pacing of it too much mm. I just think it was one of those ones that maybe you could have had maybe not had this on and put it on another show but um I mean Decent effort. Street Profits have been very much the the team at the moment for a while. Um, coming along, what was your your take on this one? I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I kind of see what you're saying. You know, in terms of like, you could have placed this match on on Raw, and I think they, I think on Raw they they, they, they did a rematch, yeah, they did. Really, haven't they? Since <laughs> so. um, but I mean, what what I took away from this again is you know it's, it's it's a great you know great thing for the Street Profits who obviously you know getting a big mm-hmm. push at the tag champs. It was great. Mm-hmm. You know, I am a massive fan of Angel Garza. Um, yeah. Although, I, I, because I was a massive fan of Hector Garza, uh, his uncle, yeah, yeah. Um, and Angel, I, said, I wrote this on Twitter <laughs> last, yesterday. I was like, I said, has anyone seen Altered Carbon? Because um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Angel Garza is a re-sleeved mm-hmm. version of Hector Garza. Because yeah. just, you know, but you know, he is his own person. You know, but mm-hmm. he just, he, 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 but his moonsault, it's like he does the identical moonsault, and the um, yeah. and the whole the whole trouser ripping thing obviously came from Hector as well. So. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he's doing amazing credit to his fa- his family's uh, legacy. Obviously, the Garza family. Um, he's done amazing yeah. credit. And, yeah, and no, I think absolutely. what you know, I also thought, what an amazing opportunity. Austin. I mean, Austin Theory. I didn't really know a lot about. I actually stumbled mm-hmm. across Austin Theory on that documentary series, The Wrestlers. Yes, um, yeah. which was on Vice. I've, I've, I, I, what, I happened to watch his one recently, mm-hmm. um, and they also said, you know, this guy's a real prod- prodigy. And this is when he was still with the Evolve. I think it was, mm-hmm. it was before he he got signed. But he's, I mean, he just was barely scratching the surface of NXT TV, wasn't he? And then suddenly yeah, he's got this, yeah. he's got this call up. And I think it's an amazing, obviously, so like same with Angel, really. Obviously, he was just kind of cutting his teeth on NXT. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly an opportunity through circumstances has come up. Yeah. Um, and this is what you get for these two. These two have kind of just grabbed the, grabbed the ball by the horns because this opportunity has arisen, which obviously wasn't in the pipeline. Yeah. And you know, and I think they they made a really decent showing of it. I think you know both guys did really well to kind of, you know, show themselves off. And obviously mm-hmm. they've got you know they've got many miles ahead of them, which which I'm quite and I, I I'm really excited for both of them to see where they go from this. So um, I found it maybe a little bit odd introducing Bianca Belair at the end. Um, yeah, yeah. Only because that, yeah. only because again it was the, the you know the, the empty arena effect. I think mm-hmm. that possibly could have waited until Raw um, yeah. to do. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, and I just thought it, was, it felt slightly off kilter because that's usually where they introduce people, isn't it? Is the mm-hmm. Raw after WrestleMania yeah. when you get yeah. the introduction to the new, the new set of people. Mm-hmm. So to get it happen on WrestleMania was a bit odd in just, uh, um, yeah, you know, um, and there, I think it was just, it was a slight moment. There was just, there was a moment at the end there. I think um, she came out, she attacked Zelina, and then like, I think it was either Angel or Austin Theory were just kind of watching it happen rather <laughs> than doing anything about it. And, you know, it was just like the odd just leave it. But, um, but yeah, yeah. Um, and I think there was the one bit that did make me laugh, though. I'm pretty sure, I think, like, you know, um, 
when um, Montez Ford did his dive, he did this little <laughs> he did the little sign of the cross just before he did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so that <laughs> <laughs> which made me chuckle. So yeah, it was for, it, for that reason. You know, like I said, he introduced us to, to two future superstars. So mm-hmm. you know, it was good. It was good in that way. Yeah, um, so solid. I was obviously very pleased with the timing of this because it was short, which was kind of exactly what we needed after that huge marathon match um, of Last Man Standing. So yeah, um, the Street Profits 